Kendall, you uh, caught the ball out of the backfield several times in that game on Saturday. Just how much more comfortable do you feel doing that now compared to, say, this time of year ago? Uh, I would say I'm very comfortable. You know, we had a big offseason just working with the quarterbacks, uh, all the running backs really just trying to put ourselves in position to, you know, just get comfortable with that game. Because at the end of the day, we want to um, be a force in multiple different aspects of the game. So, you know, I'm super comfortable with the aspect, and I'm super excited that, you know, we can open the offense in multiple dimensions. Kendall, you've had injuries a lot in your career. How just gratifying you to be able to find the end zone twice in the season opening? Uh, it was really great, you know, but at the same time, during the whole process, my teammates stayed in my ear. They just let me know that uh, they were just going to stay with me. You know, I was doing all the rehab and in the training room and everything that I needed to do so I could get back on the field as soon as possible. And I just had my teammates just, you know, had my back the whole time. So they made the process really easy to come back on the field. How, how much have they supported you over the past couple years? And how much has it meant to you to have them right there by your side even when you're not necessarily on the field? Yeah, it's, it's meant the world to me, especially in the past, you know, with the knee injuries. Uh, it, during those times of being now, you know, it was, it was kind of hard, but they just always let me know, just keep your head up. You know, your time's going to come. And, you know, that's what I did. I just, you know, kept my head down, just kept working, kept doing what I needed to do to get back on the field. And I'm just happy that I could be in big moments with my teammates. How much, uh, it, it was hamstrings, you just never can tell, especially in a skill position like you. Uh, how concerned were you as you got closer to the game about mm -hmm. being able to get back? Obviously, yeah. you were able to, to make it back, mm -hmm. but how much of an unknown was that for a while? To be honest, I wasn't really concerned because, uh, you know, me and Ron, we talked a whole lot about it. You know, I'm one of those players that I stayed in the training room all day, basically, and just kept doing what I needed to do to get it back. And, you know, we just had the plan, and it was really my job to do what I needed to do to get back on the field. So, you know, I just did what I had to. And Ron, the training room, you know, the whole uh, the whole workout training room, everybody, they just put me in a position to get back. And I'm just thankful for them that they really uh, put a lot of attention, a lot of effort to help me get back on the field. Were you 100%, would you mm -hmm. say, by the time you yes, played sir. Saturday? Yes, sir. When you're battling injuries and going through that rehab, like, is there anything that you're able to is there anything you were able to work on, even if you weren't able to go full tilt? Yeah, definitely. I was still able to do most of the uh, like the leg uh, workouts and the upper body workouts, and even to do some running on the side, just trying to stay in shape, keep my body right. And you know, at the end of the day, I still wanted to be uh, ready and in shape by the time the season got there. I didn't want to have to, you know, play catch up. So, you know, like I said, Coach Sinclair and everybody in the weight room and the training room, they just helped me, you know, with conditioning, keeping my body ready, everything like that to, you know, stay ready for the field. Coming from that perspective, what kind of things have you been telling Andrew Paul now that he's in the process of his rehab process? Oh, I let him know that, you know, at this point, he just has to trust the, uh, the training room. You know, Ron and them, they've dealt with multiple injuries like that. So they definitely know what it takes to get back on the field. And, you know, I can understand, I can relate to, being out and you know not being able to play, so I just let them know just keep doing what you have to do, just you know keep God with you and everything will work out. Just keep your head down and uh, everything's gonna play itself out. Kendall, okay, you were close to a couple scores in the first half. I know that's you know you mm -hmm. have only had one touchdown before this year. How good did it feel to get not one but two in, in the second? It felt great to be honest, but at the end of the day, uh, if you look back on the plays, it was really you know key blocks made, especially on the pass. Uh, Reed Gilbert and uh, Marcus Roseme, you know. Plays like that, they kind of set it up and opened up the holes that allowed me to be able to get in the end zone. So, you know, after the end zone, I made sure I got right back to my teammates and, you know, slapped them on the helmet, thanked them because, you know, at the end of the day, especially as a running back, we really can't do anything unless, you know, everything else, you know, works itself out. Kent, of course, this year it's a little bit different running back room with the guys uh, who live. Just kind of talk about what the vibe is like with, with you guys and mm -hmm. it just, I mean, it, Everybody talked about George being mm -hmm. RBU. I mean, just it's y'all sure. turn now. Is yeah. that something that that aspect of something you talk about a lot? Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, in the running back room, we're definitely a family. You know, especially uh, me, Kenny, and Dejan. We played a lot of football together, and especially with Branson and Andrew Paul coming in, we welcomed them with open arms, and they just became part of the family. You know, we have you know little group chats, and we communicate with each other, and you know the vibe is just like like I said, it's like a brotherhood. And that's what I'll describe our running back room as. Everybody, you know, if we need something, we go to each other. And there's never nothing that we can't talk to each other about. Kind of along those lines, you were obviously on the team last year, but how eager are you to prove that, like, that should, it's your time, it's your turn, you can carry on this RBU tradition yeah. now that you're fully healthy. Like, how eager are yeah. you? Yeah, I'm definitely excited to, you know, take on a bigger role on this team. and. But at the same time, you know, even coming up as a freshman, as a sophomore, I knew that it was all about trusting the process because, you know, at a school like this, we're always going to have uh, 
five star, four star running backs coming in back to back to back. So at a certain point, you just kind of got to wait your turn. And at the end of the day, everybody's going to get their turn. It's just you got to, you know, be humble enough and you know look at yourself and realize that you still have aspects in your game that you have to fully develop before you can take on a bigger role. Did a touchdown catch in the spring game, touchdown catch in your first game. How much in the past year have you really spent working on your abilities as a pass catcher? And how much do you think you've improved in that area? I've definitely uh, made that a key focus. Uh, talking with Coach McGee, uh, I let him know that that was one aspect that I wanted to work on because coming in at high school, I felt like, you know, high school, I didn't really catch the ball. It was mostly, you know, just running the ball. So coming in, I let him know that I want to, by the time that it's my time to, you know, move on, I want to be the complete back in all areas. And uh, he's worked with me, you know, countless times during the offseason, just trying to put me in those deep ball situations or those coming out the backfield situations. And uh, I'm just thankful that, you know, I have a coach that, you know, is willing to put effort for me to be able to help my, uh, make my dreams happen. What's, so this week, what's this week been like, knowing that you guys had a you know, pretty complete game uh, last week and you have a different type of opponent this week? You know, what's the atmosphere been like in the practice field? Uh, it's definitely been the same type of vibe, like we're, you know, playing Oregon or playing any other team. It's the same approach. Uh, one thing that we've kind of uh, been focusing on is, uh, at the end of the day, we have to up on our standard as Georgia. We can't, you know, look any other way. Uh, we have to, we have to make it our job to keep the standard alive and keep those physical Tuesday, Wednesday practices. At the end of the day, those practices are what build Georgia football. Those, you know, we call it bloody Tuesdays, and you know, we come out there and it's just bloodbath, team running, periods like that. Those are periods that you know build Georgia football. So, at the, we're still uh, attacking this week, and you know, every day we're practicing hard because. You know, we want to be the best team, and I believe that we have uh, everything we need, you know, the players, the coaches, and, you know, we trust the coaches to, you know, make that happen. So we're just taking this, you know, hungry as ever. After the game, Kirby talked about this being an offense that people are at home, they're watching, and they want to play in it. As somebody that's actually out there on the field, you know, what is it that makes this offense attractive to guys' perspective? Uh, I would say, yeah, I would say Coach Munkin, he has the ability to, you know, it's not just offense where it's just passing or just running. He has the ability to put the ball in multiple uh, different players' hands and, you know, let players just show what they can do. And I feel like just coming off of that Oregon game, I feel like a lot of players, uh, they all got to touch the ball and everybody really made plays. And that was that's really the most exciting thing about football, you know, when you and all your brothers, the ones that you, you know, grind out with doing those stadium runs or those team runs, the conditioning, you know, when everybody's really eating and, that's what makes it more fun because at the end of the day, you know, you want to see everybody eat. So this offense is just, I would say, you know, talking to a recruit or something like that, this is an offense where everybody can showcase their talents. We saw Kenny making plays in mm -hmm. the backfield, lined up out wide. Mm -hmm. How much of that what you did on Saturday is what you've been seeing pretty much through the offseason? Oh, that's, you know, seeing Kenny do that is, you know, it's really kind of nothing new. You know, even since I got to Georgia, all the time in practice, he was making those plays. He has that that stick ability to put his foot in the ground and just make a defender miss. And he also, you know, he's one of the best uh, receiving running backs that I've seen. So just, you know, seeing him in the game, I was really happy for him because, you know, like I said, in this, in this system, you just have to wait your turn. And I was just happy to see, you know, one of my brothers just be able to go out there and showcase for the world what we already knew. Like you said, you had to be be patient. I mm -hmm. mean, to, to finally be given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Were there times the first couple of years? I know the injuries kind of had a little mm -hmm. bit to do with it, but did you find your own patience kind of wearing thin? You kind of had to talk yourself. I said, "Hey, look, I got that." Yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't really say it wore thin because. You know, I had uh, James Cook and Zemir White in front of me, and, you know, those are both great backs. And, you know, just watching them practice and just seeing how comfortable they were in the game time, you know, a lot of the comfort they had were things that I was nervous about, like when it came to pass blocking or catching out the backfield or just, you know, getting the reads throughout the defense. And I, you kind of have to look yourself in the mirror and, like, decide, like, okay, are you really ready to be, you know, the, the number one or, you know, ready to have that main role. So I kind of just, you know, took my opportunities and tried to do the most that I could do with them. But at the end of the day, I still knew that I had things to work on to be able to become the back that I wanted to be. How much better do you feel you read defenses now when you're lined mm -hmm. up in the backfield? Does it, does, yeah. does it come natural now? Are you still kind of, you know, mm -hmm. depending on somebody else to kind of help guide you, you know what's going to happen. No, I feel very confident now, you know, you know, everybody, once we get the offense set and everything, Kind of, it's just kind of, you know, working with Coach McGee and, you know, on the running back room, he always kind of emphasizes being able to do that even before, you know, the points made or anything like that. If you can know the play before, you know, it really even happens, and that's when you can really elevate your game. So 
I would say I'm very confident because now I can just, you know, kind of relax instead of having to worry about everything, you know, my job or anything. I can kind of just relax and just play my game. You were rushing to the on Saturday. Can you still walk me through what you saw in that play? A pretty nifty comeback there to score. Mm -hmm. Really, you know, we got the ball and. One thing that uh, in the running back room we emphasize is you got to be able to make first level uh, first level reads. So, you know, um, just got the ball and saw you know the cut to be made. And once I made the cut, you, I just saw green grass, and you know that's definitely a great feeling because you know once you get that open space, all you got to do is just go take it. So, you know, the line they did what they had to. They opened up the hole, and it was just my job to you know finish it. And I'm just you know thankful for the line that we have because those guys are the same guys that every day. They're out there battling against some of the best D line in the country every day, just working and working and working, and we just make each other better. What have you seen from Dejan so far this fall? Dejan, he's, I would say he's somebody that, you know, he's definitely one of those runners that he'll definitely catch you by surprise, you know what I mean? Like, he'll come in, he's, you know, he's one of those, he'll slide through the defense, he'll make those cuts, make somebody miss uh, the, the receiving game. He'll, I would say our linebackers probably fear Dejan most because he has that just, that quick little twitch to him. And, you know, Dejan's game, I just love seeing the way that it's elevated since we got here and just being able to see every, everybody's game elevate. But, you know, Dejan, I think Dejan's a really special player. And, you know, he's one of, I'm glad that he's in a running back room like we have to, you know, be a part of our family. Outside the numbers, is there any measuring stick that you guys, especially in the running back room, hold yourselves to to make sure you're improving every week, like something on film or anything that maybe a lot of people won't notice? I would say just holding the standard of Georgia running backs. Uh, a lot of Georgia running backs have, you know, were in the past and have really set the standard for, you know, Georgia football as a whole. So we just want to kind of follow in that lineage and just uphold the standard, just keep that title of RBU. And you just mentioned Zeus and James Cook. Have they hit you up with any advice to start the season yet or not yet? I or... know oh, they already, you know, before the games, they, you know, put us, we're all in like a little group chat. They text us and like, it's game time, it's time to go. And, you know, we, that's when it's time to lock in. So, you know, I'm, I'm thankful because, you know, I, I became close with James Cook and Zamir White through the time here. We spent two years together and they became almost, they became like big brothers to me, you know. They, in times when, you know, it was tough for me at Georgia, they were the ones that uh, helped me keep my head up and, you know, keep my head on straight. So, uh, you know, I'm glad that even as they're doing their thing, you know, continuing to chase their dream at the next level, they still reach back out to us and basically just kind of give us a few words before the game and let us know it's time to lock in. All right, thank you, Kendall.